All right, everybody, welcome to 2022. And of course, that means the first of our live shows here on YouTube. My name's Thomas Atkinson from FX Evolution. And I'm joined by Tyrone from FX Evolution. And this is one of many Pepperstone Learn It Live TV shows, or I guess YouTube shows that we'll be doing for today and for the rest of the year. I'm pretty excited to get into this. Ty, how has your holiday been? And are you ready to get into FX and scalping these majors today? Yeah, most definitely. Looking forward to a really good year of trading. Welcome, everybody. I can see in the comments section that we've got a very, very vast uh, number of different countries. So we're we're coming at you pretty much from all around the world, which is awesome. So uh, please feel free to put your questions in as we go along. This is an advanced uh, scalping strategy webinar. So we'll be talking at a pretty higher level. But if you have any questions, of course, fire them away and we'll do our best to answer them at the same time. But we're looking forward to a really good year of trading. I think we're getting some really good setups and we're looking forward to delving into some of the bigger ones and uh, getting some bias, I guess, for the next couple of months at the very least. Absolutely right, Ty. With the FX uh, VIX, the VIX of the S&P 500 above 20, and of course, the dollar index becoming a resurgent beast, a bit strong there due to interest rate hikes. The great thing for Forex traders is we believe 2022 is going to be exciting year for Forex because central banks are going to be making decisions. And when central banks go a certain direction, Tyrone, what does that begin? Not only do yeah. scalpers do well, we've got trends. And we've got swing traders coming back in as well. And I'm excited. I'm yeah. super excited for that. I the whole toolbox great. actually starts to work at that point. Like every single trade yeah. that you can pretty much put on uh, will have some sort of formation, whether it's a scalp, whether it's a, a longer term trade or a swing trade. So we love those environments. And look, you know, 2021 wasn't a bad year for trading anyway, uh, but I think 2022 will take it to the next level. I think we're going to get a lot more opportunities to actually stay in the market and obviously scalp different levels. So no, can't wait. Cannot wait. All right. Before we get into it, just a quick risk warning. I will pop that up on the screen right now. Please take a look at it and then we'll get into the markets and obviously what we're going to be covering today. All right. So what will we be covering today, Tyrone? Well, of course, scalping strategies for 2022, how we're going to be looking at the markets, how we're going to be scalping them. And we'll be going through a certain type of scalp that we really like to do. Another thing, Excuse me. Another thing that we'd like to be doing is going into the live chart. So we'll be doing that with FX analysis and, of course, our key levels and indicators that we'll be using and live Q&A as always. If you have questions, ask them throughout. We'll be reading the chat. We've got a few team members in there as well reading the chat and then, and then we will answer them as best we can. Another thing that we want to really reiterate is that 2022 will be about central banks and be about policy. People should be aware that January 27th, we have the FOMC statement in the US, and this will be moving, of course, the DXY, and this will be a little bit scary for scalpers around this news. 6 a.m. New York time is going to be when it happens, and Tyrone, how important is it for us to be aware of this bit of news? I mean, central banks are yeah. literally putting in potentially four rate hikes in the next two years, some people saying upwards of seven. If we are not aware of this bit of economic news, we could be really, really ruined when scalping, correct? Yeah, the problem with scalping, of course, is that you're going to have basically pretty tight stop losses for your trades. And if you are not aware of the news that's going to come out at a certain time, it's going to play havoc. And that's the problem. Uh, you, you could be potentially stopped out and the trade's going to go you know, maybe in your direction anyway. That's very, very frustrating. So quite often at those very important news announcements, what you want to be doing is basically either not being in the market at all or, you know, or even wait. Or if you are going to be in the market, make sure that you've got to stop that can actually sustain a bit of whipsawing action. Because regardless of what the announcement's going to be, the whipsaw happens anyway, right? Like whether it's actually good, bad, or neutral, you're going to see some wick action. And that's where you've got to be really, really careful. So you don't have to actually understand the policy. Like you don't have to go in there and read it and that completely understand it. All you have to do is be aware of it. And that's the most important thing because that's going to protect your stop losses. Because at the end of the day, we're talking about technical setups here where as much as the fundamentals are important, we're not going to sit there and study the um, the notes and the minutes and hang on every word that they say uh, like fundamental traders do. Okay, we're going to be in there. We're going to be waiting for the result and then we're going to be trading accordingly. So it's just important to know that it is actually coming out. Now, while this is a bit of an advanced live session today and we will be going through some advanced style concepts it's still also get a question all the time what should i be trading when i first start what should i be trading even as an intermediate to advanced trader and our answer is always going to be around highly liquid pairs 
especially for scalping. I mean, you need high liquidity. You need a lot of transaction volume. You almost need algorithms to be involved in the market or expert advisors, as many people know them as. So things like gold, silver, silver just had a breakout recently. They're going to be some highly volatile, we believe, commodities in 2022. January, a seasonally strong period for it. In fact, I think January is technically the best month for the last 20 years, Ty, for gold average bull moves. So that's an interesting stat there for you. US dollar majors, of course, odd USD, euro USD, USD yen, pound USD, all these, and major crosses as well. We have some examples here with some yen crosses that we'll be going through for the session today because I think that's pretty important. Another thing that's an advanced technique or a well-known technique in scalping is got to be scalping opens and for most people that are probably watching this live session or watching the recording the uk session or the london open can be one of the best times to trade generally you want to get in there around 30 minutes before the session starts to about one hour after the market opens so around 30 minutes to one hour before to around 30 minutes to one hour after and ty why do we like to do it around this period why should the people be uh, looking at doing it around this period in terms of scalping? Yeah, so what, you, well, what you're going to get is obviously very high liquidity, but by doing it around uh, that, well, you, you're going to see volume for starters. It's very, very important when you are scalping, but you're going to get the pre-traders. You're going to get the end of the Europe, or not the end of, you're going to get uh, the European markets uh, generally start about an hour. You get the Frankfurt open generally before then. So you've already got some market action, but especially uh, an hour after the market settles down, quite often you are going to see things like, uh, what we like to call the fake out, the, the great old London fake out, where it often takes an hour for the market to actually really delve into the trend that it's actually going to run in for the better part of the London session into the New York session. So realistically, yeah, prior to it, you get some really good scalping opportunities, but the intraday trends and, and some of the swinging opportunities will actually happen uh, after that hour when the market actually opens. So it's very important to understand this. If you just go in blindly and start trading five minutes to uh, the open, and you're not really aware that London's about to open, it's a little bit like trading news almost. Uh, you are going to get potentially faked out very, very quickly. So it's one of those ones where you've got to be really, really, yeah, not, not, not so much careful, but aware. It's, it's all about awareness. Uh, and, and that goes with anything in trading, really. But these are very, very important points. As much as news, you have to be aware of it when it's going to be released. You must be aware and very, very aware of when a market is about to open. It, it opens the same time every day. Uh, and, until, of course, daylight savings changes. So it's really, really important to at least have that penciled in. So if that's the time that you are going to trade, you're very, very aware of that. And then it's not going to give you any problems. Greg has a comment here and he says 7.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. UK time, question mark. That's right, Greg. That would be the time frame that you'd be coming in. Effectively getting that Frankfurt, as Tyrone mentioned, the, uh, kind of the, the half an hour into Frankfurt, and then making sure you're there for that liquidity spike and potential London fake out that can occur. Yeah, we've got another so, question. Actually, we might just touch on this one. Darth yep, Vader asks, sure. um, do we count um, the higher highs and higher lows or lower highs, lower lows? Um, look, we, we don't actually do that as a rule uh, counting wise because all we require is our special lightning bolt. The lightning bolt we've effectively patented over the last uh, probably four or five years. And, mm -hmm. and that only really requires uh, two of each, okay? So once we've got a series of higher highs and higher lows that equal two, although we don't technically count that, once we've got the lightning bolt, that is what we're looking for. Once we've got that, that's our determination that a trend is starting to move, okay? So are counting bars, you mean, no, we don't count bars. No, we only count highs and lows uh, as in the, the tops and bottoms. Yeah, counting piece, bars can be pretty pretty time consuming, can't it, Ty, if we do that? Yeah. So one of the things that I think we talk about a little bit different to a lot of scalpers out there is the top-down approach, where we go through multiple timeframes to ascertain whether a market is in a participation phase, a consolidation phase, or of course a distribution phase. We want to know where the market's at on a top-down analysis, and then we can more effectively scalp or day trade those particular charts. So let's actually go into recognizing price action now. Let's actually jump into the charts together. And we'll start off here with, I think, a symbol of 2022. And Tyron and I will come back on the screen here for this bit. So the thing with 2022, what started off is we have an increase in volatility. And this, of course, means the VIX or the volatility index has spiked above 20. Now, whenever you see the VIX above 20, 
it means that there's an increased amount of chance of, of course, movement, that is volatility in itself, and therefore it is a scalper and day traders style of market. In general, most people tend to sway away from the idea of swing trading when markets are above 20, don't they, Ty? Because yeah. markets often sell off quickly, then bounce or have these big ripper rallies, as they call them, the rip rallies, that can really be the ultimate problem for swing-based traders. So swing-based traders want a more technical market and scalpers and day traders want a more volatile market. So this is the perfect period to be looking for those scalps and day trades, isn't it, in comparison to swing? It is. And it's very important to understand with the VIX index, of course, because I mean, because this is an advanced um, session, we obviously, mm -hmm. we're going to refer to the VIX a little bit. The VIX mm -hmm. is not something that is going to be um, definitely short or definitely long if it's above 20 or 25 or 30. It's very, very important to remember that a lot of people fall into the trap of thinking if the VIX is very high, the market's going to sell off. It is a fear index, but it doesn't necessarily mean or signal that the market's going to sell off. It just means that the market is becoming volatile. And although don't, don't let the name deter you that um, you know, the fear index means it's going to sell off. It just means that the market gets volatile. And markets, as a rule, want to stay stable. Most traders, uh, if you're not absolutely scalping, um, prefer a stable market. When the VIX starts to increase, that stability starts to decrease. So, and that's what gives it the fear index. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go down or up. It's a bit like the ADX indicator. All it's telling us is the volatility is increasing. And therefore, we trade accordingly with that as well, or maybe use one of our different types or styles of trade. Let's move over the DXY here, Ty. Of course, this discussion at the moment is interest rate hikes. You can see that by looking at two-year bond yield here. You'll notice that the two-year bond yield is over 1%. That's really showing us that there's four rate hikes that they're expecting over the next two years. People like Jamie Dimon from JP Morgan, they basically think seven rate hikes. Now, imagine if that happened, the type of move that we could see happen on the DXY. It could be incredible. So while I guess my kind of opinion on 2022 is if I was looking at it from the start of the year to the end of the year, I would have a guess that the DXY will be higher. A scalper and day trader doesn't really care about that opinion, do they, Ty? And while we might, no, I don't know if you agree with that, but I think that the DXY probably will over the longer term start to continue to angle up just due to pressures of interest rate hikes. That's not what we're looking at. So we go through the top-down approach. And the top-down approach basically is where we go from the weekly into the daily, into the four-hour, into the one-hour, and then so on and so forth to try to figure out key levels. And the reason we do this is because sometimes we find really interesting zones. So for an example, recently, we had a rejection candle up here, followed by a long leg doji, followed by another rejection candle. Now, when you see these types of rejection candles, what you're looking for at these kind of areas is either breakouts towards the upside and therefore great scalping opportunities or reversals, which is what happened, and sell-off opportunities around this area here, around this 96.50 to 96.60. This allows us to then break down the euro, US dollar, and look for strength or weakness that correlates to with this. Because remember, the DXY, even if you don't want to trade it, it's predominantly made up of euro. That's the most closely correlated one. So we do this top-down analysis where we go through the weekly into the daily to try to find maybe key zones. And you'll notice I have a highlighted area here. Now, the reason I had this highlighted area is because for me, it was a scalping potential area of interest. If the market had bounced up, which it did, this was a zone that I then had blocked with this nice green box here where I was looking for a reversal. And the reason why is because previous support may become resistance here. Now, I may not want to trade that on a daily, but what I could be doing is on that time frame, I could be going down into something like a 15-minute chart and looking at the market momentum and how it comes into this zone. Now, let's say, for example, it comes in, hits this area, and does what Tyrone mentioned before, which is the peak, the trough, the lower peak, and the lower trough. This is a perfect scalp zone for us to do the short op short position if we were in this particular scenario. Why? Because we know it's a key zone on the higher timeframes. We know it's an area of interest. We've highlighted it before it's happened, and we're looking for a reversal. Now, it isn't always going to happen, and that's part of trading, isn't it, Ty? You're paying chess. Yeah. You're setting up for a move, and then unfortunately, the opposition sometimes 
does a move you didn't expect and they're doing the London, uh, what's it called? I think it's like the London method. And <laughs> I'm not that sure on chess anymore. I know there's a London method and all sorts of, we'll go Queen's Gambit. I don't know. I know that one. <laughs> but they're using methods that are different and therefore you have to change your strategy. So you're finding key areas of interest and then you are trading it. And someone mentioned before the uh, pound yen. It's really frustrating. They mentioned that one's going because that was, as you can see here, literally on my chart. And I'm going to talk about why I like this from a scalp perspective. It's a more advanced technique and it is a beautiful currency pair to do it when you see these types of setups. But we'll come back to that in a minute. So this is the right yeah. zone. We look for the change of direction, whether that be price action base, lightning bolt, or double top or any of those types of patterns. And if it occurs, we trade it, don't we, Ty? Most definitely. And and look, although, you know, it is a bit of a game of chess, what you're really doing is taking a lot of the risk off the table by letting it set up. Because if you're trying to preempt the move and actually trading that preemption, that's where you're going to run into problems. That's where a lot of people do a lot of their money, really, in their accounts, actually trying to actually predict where it's going to go rather than waiting for the setup to actually happen. And there is a very, very big difference. It doesn't sound like there's much of a difference, but believe me, there is. Uh, if you wait for the setups to actually play out and you do the, the chess moves, as Thomas explained, what you're going to do is put the odds significantly in your favor of actually having a, tr a transaction that's actually going to work out as opposed to the 50-50, will it or will it not work out? Um, we're going to probably add some key words for uh, the year 2022. We mentioned at the end of last year is going to be patience, um, patience in your trade setup, because mm -hmm. when you have that and you bring that in as part of your trading strategy, you will find it's going to be a very, very um, significantly easier road to actually be profitable than it is actually just having um, shots at the market and just hoping that it's actually going to reach a level or hoping it's going to form a pattern or hoping it's going to do this, that, and the other. Very, very important to let the setup happen, let the market play the game first, and then you join in once all of the, I guess, the, the easy money has actually broken down those key levels. It's very, it's very important. Uh, and it might sound basic, but it's a very important lesson to learn if you want to be profitable. So we find and highlight the areas, we be patient, we learn the lessons there. And there's a few comments in here and there's some good ones. Uh, we'll just get this. Uh, Dava says, so it's not that favorable period for swing traders. It, did I understand that correctly? That is correct. Generally when the VIX, now it doesn't mean you, like your system may still work, but in general, when you have a VIX over 20, swing can get a little bit destroyed. Swing is really a great mm. method when markets are acting technically yes. and doing that two steps forward, one step back, yeah. not going on a vertical trip to the moon no. or conversely, the negative way that we don't want to be going. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or seeing it happen both in one day. Yes, yeah, swing yeah, trading is, uh, yeah, successful swing trading is synonymous with, with markets that are behaving themselves. Mm -hmm. A market that's behaving themselves is the perfect swing trading environment, especially ones that are trending up. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, when the VIX is up, it's scalp and get the hell out. So we'll move over. Obviously, with the DXY, we had potentially a failed setup here where we were looking to place a scalp at around this area and it didn't do it. Now, yes, it's gone further up and it's sold down. This is what we would call a non-trigger event. And it's important to show things where setups may have failed, but you had a great concept. Let's move over to silver and what it's currently doing because silver is another top down and weekly is basically showing us that we've had buying pressure quite a lot off the 2169. You might say, okay, cool, don't care. It's a weekly, it's not a smaller time frame. Then we go into the daily though and some very interesting things have occurred in the previous session. And this leads us to having a very good day trade scalping session for today's period. And that is that we had a resistance, weak rejection, a resistance breakdown, effectively a giant lightning bolt on the higher time frame here being the daily and another long leg doji or resistance candle that has been breached and breached above. So we got above the 2340 and what this does is it triggers potential buyers to come into what we call a participation phase. And we have kind of like a participation phase between this point and somewhere around that 24, maybe 50 area with previous resistance around this level. So you'll notice there's not that much resistance support here, at least to 24, where there's a bit of support. We've got a fairly nice runway. And this allows us to then go into the smaller timeframes and instigate our potential scalping style trade. So we can get into the 15 minute, the five minute, those types of things. And we can have a look at what happens throughout the trading session. So we get things like a new breach, well, that's a new peak. It comes down, tests it, 
you get that really nice bullish candle that goes again. And that that might be a signal coming into, let's say, the London Open and around that time that you might want to go, okay, bang, I want to long this and I'm going to long this to the 24 because yeah. of all of the sequences from the top down. Isn't that right, Ty? That's right. And you've got lightning bolts. We've gone through four mm-hmm. or five different time frames there. And all yeah. I saw was lightning bolts uh, and they're everywhere. And that's, and that's one of the key components. Look, advanced uh scalping requires a very solid understanding of price action right there's no question yep. about that price action is the most important thing that you'll ever learn in trading and really it price action is the most important component of scalping because it's the it's the best leading indicator there is price is the best indicator there is for a leading um of where the market's going to go so understanding when the momentum has shifted out of a, a particular zone is extraordinarily important now, if we go back to the daily chart on that silver uh, you'll see that the actual uh, lightning bolt was formed. Uh, even the big one that Thomas was talking about was there, but there was also another small one in the last, you know, the last little bit there. You can see that lightning bolt right there, and that one's actually broken through the resistance that we were talking about. So, mm-hmm. realistically, you know, understanding that is probably the most important thing. Indicators are great, but a lot of them are lagging. You've got to remember that. Now, is that going to help you as much in scalping as understanding price action? Absolutely not. So it's very, very important to grasp what the candles are trying to tell you. And the best pattern that you're always going to look for is that lightning bolt, whether it's an up lightning bolt or a down lightning bolt. I'm going to ask the community right now. I want you to answer this question. And that is, why do you think Tyron and I may look at the daily, weekly and four hour charts to ascertain whether we like the idea of scalping the five minute, 15 minute charts? Think about it for a little bit there and answer the question in the chat if you can. Why do you think we like the high time frames? And it has something to do with, let's just bias. call it, <laughs> no, not even bias, not even bias. It has something to do with the ability of what we all want to do, which is to be able to make as much profit as possible. Yeah. Why do you think we might like the higher time frames and then to scalp within that concept? Let's see if anyone gets this one. So we've got a few people saying direction. Let's see if they they get it, Ty. Um, another thing I want to just remind everybody, if you do enjoy these types of live sessions, please remember to smash that like button. We've got about 69 likes, it looks like, 215 watching. If you do enjoy it, please smash the like button. It does help out Pepperstone to know that you guys like this. We continue to produce it, and that's excellent. So yeah. Silver on its way here, it certainly had some good scalping opportunities in today's session, and it's just one of many that are providing opportunity and i will move over to the pound yen in a second as well because that's another one that was there so plenty of questions coming in here and they're all over the place but it's all right we've got yep. strong signals trends yep. reliable overall nearly direction. everybody is cr- nearly everyone's uh, correct uh technically yes correct but i'm now. greedy ty so one of the reasons i also Ooh. like it is because I can set higher take profits and leave scaled positions in. Scaling, scaling (laughs) between your, why wouldn't you? I mean, if you're scalping, usually a scalper will be in and out. You're in and out within an hour, yeah? But what, let's think in 2022, if you got the big brain out and you were thinking about, we are going to place trades with scaling opportunities where we might say, okay, let's leave a third of our order on. And because we've used upper timeframe analysis, we might be able to keep our stop in enter into what we call the participation phase and potentially enter with a small stop loss and take a profit that is very valid at maybe a 24 or 24.50 or something like that. Imagine the risk reward ratios that you could be getting through here. And that's part of the reason why we love doing top-down approach. And I think a few people there did answer that. So uh, Darth Vader calls me greedy Tom. (laughs) <laughs> uh, Darth Vader, you've got no idea about greedy Tom. You should go to his place for Christmas dinner and you want to see greedy. Um, oh. so it, it definitely fits the bill. But let me tell you this. Um, a, a lot of you have also said that you're looking for trends inside of trends, which is absolutely right. And, and exactly what Thomas is saying. When you know that the prevailing trend is going in a direction and going into a significant direction, it does certainly allow you to aim for more than you normally would in a sideways market. So understanding all of those, nearly everybody's got it right just in a different way. But uh, greedy Tom, you know, is right when you're looking for the absolute um, extra profit, which is really good, which obviously is what we want. Um, and it gives you the ability to do that without actually taking extra risk. And I think that's the important part. That's you're milking bit. more out of the trade without the extra risk involved. 
That's correct. So we'll bring over to another bit of an advanced strategy here, Ty, and that is recognizing price action at its absolute basic and understanding each and every candle from the left-hand side. And Tyron, we do a bit of private group mentoring over at fxevolution.com. And one of the things that I always go on about, and I absolutely slam this home to people, is look at the left-hand side of the instrument that you're trading. Has it been technical in the past? and have certain scenarios like the scenario that you're currently looking at worked in the past. And if they have, that can create a better style of trade. So let's just quickly ignore what we're seeing right now. And it's a little bit annoying that it's moved off here during the session, but that's okay. You know, I had this one up. And one of the reasons is let's go and have a look at this pound yen over here. So let's read some of the left-hand side stories. We've obviously got a movement down on the smaller time frame. Now, this is not necessarily using top-down approach. I'm just finding this zone here, 155.60, but we will might maybe look at the high time frame soon. Let's think about these left-hand sides. We've got a rejection wick, okay, on the 15 minutes. So someone's been buying here off this base. They've been buying it again. They've been selling this top end and we start to get long leg doji. So effectively highs, lows, opens and closes very similar to each other. And what this is telling us is there's buyers here. There's definitely demand, Okay. There's sellers here, so there's definitely a problem. And in between, we've got huge indecision. So when we start to see these indecision candles and we continue to see buying candles like this, what this is overall telling us is that there is some strong buying potential down here. The support is strong. And if it is able to breach past the top of these long leg dojis with the closure, then maybe we should be scalping that for the session. So we come in, we see, let's say, this point here. I'd be drawing some resistance, support, and looking for a breach of either of these zones. This story is incredibly compelling towards either the buy or the sell, but in particular, the buy zone because of all the strong bullish hammers and bullish rejections. And this is a hammer. This is a pin bar. Many people know it as. You guys know there is some kind of buyer that's sitting here. And when it breaches this zone, it goes on a nice run. Why? Because this was such a great base. And that's about reading the price actions in the tie, understanding the candles, yep. understanding what it's actually telling us. Even the volume was high, so it's around that session open. Yeah, most definitely. And I think that gives you all of the information you need to know about that level. And that's why we that's why candles are so important. Because although they are wiki and you might say that's a messy market. What that's mm -hmm. telling us and guaranteeing us effectively is it's a very indecisive market. And when one of those indecision levels get broken, which it eventually does, that's when you know that you're on. And, and I think that's the important part. You're not just trading a breakout. You're trading mm -hmm. a breakout of a significant zone that was tested several times over a very small period. So that's where you get your scalping bias. And, you know, you, you could argue many patterns there. You could argue moving averages. But really, the, the most important thing that you knew about that was what, what was price was doing. Once yep. you understood that, everything else becomes irrelevant. You had your mm -hmm. volume, which helped. Uh, you got your moving averages that got broken, which helped. But in the end, it was a lightning bolt that fired that off. So lightning bolt fired it off, but we also had an amazing story of the candles. And we come over to what just recently happened on pound yen. And it's a very similar style story. But in this case, what's happened is there's constant potential rejection. So we have here maybe a bullish hammer to the upside doesn't really complete. There's no momentum follow through. Another one, another buyer, long leg doji, long leg doji, rejection candle, rejection candle, rejection candle, rejection candle. And then all of a sudden we slam past that rejection candle and create that bullish pressure. And if we're on something like a five minute chart, we're going to be able to go into the five minute and one minute charts and see that breakout occur. So you see how on the five minute chart, we still have that strong resistance and this becomes our scalpable zone for that day or that session, which we could be in very quickly, in and out, practice scaling, that kind of thing. That type of price action is exactly the type of price action we look for. And if you notice, where is it occurring? In a high volume period at the beginning of a market open. So we're seeing that, that sideways action coming from the Asian session that then comes into the London session. And then we breach past either the high or the low Again, the wicks are the key here. It shows indecision. And then when the decision is made, we see that explosion. And this happened across all the yen pairs from what I'm seeing in the chat um, really recently. So it pretty much came on across the board. So that's one of the advanced techniques that Tyron and I like to use. We like to understand the price action 
and really get down into these ideas of not just using the top-down approach and understanding the current supports and resistances, but also what are the candles telling us on the scalping timeframes, the five minute, the one minute, the 15 minute. So what, what do you have anything yep. else to add to that time? I and these are the types no. of trades that I like. I think it, it's really, really good to that we've very, been able to spend a little bit of time on that at an, at an advanced level because it's one of the most important components of scalping and understanding scalps that have the best possibility of actually working out. Uh, a lot of people seem to think that scalping is a bit of a, you know, a, a guessing game in a sense. It's either going to go in one direction quickly, but, you know, having a good bias to the direction that it is going to expect or it's expected to go, it's not guaranteed, but it's expected to go significantly increases your chances of success. So although scalping is generally a one-to-one -one or a two-to-one um, proposition from a risk reward ratio, it doesn't mean that you have to be careless in the fact that you're not really you know, doing your analysis correctly and having a stab at the direction. Understanding what's setting up and the, the more logical direction for it to go is a very, very important part because uh, scalping, there's a lot more trading in scalping as we know. You're going to be putting in a lot more trades than you would if you were just swing trading or going for longer term entries. So it doesn't mean, and it doesn't give you an open license to be a little bit um, trigger happy on on your entries, if you like. It's good to mm. understand what's actually happening in the here and the now before you actually take that step and actually go in the direction that you think it's going to go. Let it prove itself, but more importantly, history ha has a, a knack of repeating itself. That's what technical analysis is essentially, right? Um, and it's not just technical analysis. History repeats basically uh, in nearly all walks of, of life. You you know, and when you understand something and you know that it works, generally speaking, if you keep doing it over and over again in a repetitive nature, you're going to get a very similar result. Okay. And that's why it's very, very important that once you understand it, uh, you actually, you, you fully understand it for starters. That's, that's, that's the most important part because then you can reapply that exact same strategy. Just like Tom did there, we talked about the exact same setup uh, only probably four weeks earlier or three weeks earlier, and it mm. happened again. And that's, mm -hmm. and that's technical analysis 101. And, and here's the example on the odd yen. The odds actually been even better. And we have a question here is, uh, do you have a preferential time frame for actual trade signals? Yes, I would say the five minute and 15 minute are your scalping best time frame. Some people will say, oh, one minute's the way to go. One minute will give you a ton of fake outs. I mean, not that the five minute, 15 minute won't, but they will give you a slight bit of confirmation. So you'll notice here again, the market looks like it's trying to short rejection candles, shooting stars, shooting stars, shooting stars. And then all of a sudden it goes bullish and cleans above that level. And when that candle occurs here, what it's saying is you're actually being reactionary towards actually a stop hunt in some ways, because yep. what occurs here is we, they know at the beginning of the market, everyone's coming in and these are classic case retail markets. You can see that everything's say, looking short, 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 short. Notice there's no new lows. So no new lows. They constantly keeps trying to short. And we've all been stuck in this situation. I want to know if anyone in the chat's ever had a, uh, <laughs> a trade like this where they think it's going short and everything. And they're, they're sitting there and they're like, please, please, please go down. You never want to be doing that. And nah. then all of a sudden it snaps off those highs, takes out effectively stop losses, and that triggers that huge liquidity gain because effectively yeah. all the stop losses get put under pressure, don't they, Ty, at this yeah. point? And, and hopefully, you know, everybody in the room here can see why the probability of this trade going long as opposed to actually going short is very obvious to see. Like all of those wicks are telling you a story. Those big rejections from the bottom are telling you a story. Now, although it doesn't guarantee that it's going to go long, um, if you're waiting for the short, you could be very, having a very, very sad day there because realistically all indications are telling us that it's probably going to go long when it eventually breaks out. So if you're in a short there and you're hoping and praying, the minute you start hoping and praying, you've got to, you know, cl close your trade immediately. That's generally the advice that we give. Uh, because you should never be hoping and praying. You should be having a stop loss that's actually relevant to your risk ratio. So it shouldn't matter anyway, but realistically, and this is what I'm saying, if you are having a stab, uh, that that's going to go lower, um, before it broke out there and you and you're sitting there hoping it's going to happen, you're you're effectively scalping in the wrong direction. And, and hopefully mm -hmm. you can actually see that just from the price action that's happened in the previous, you know, 10 or 15 candles. That's really, really important. So these are some little bit of advanced kind of snippets. People are saying here, do sessions really matter? Uh, absolutely. I mean, London Open yeah. is well known to be the highest volume currency trading. And of course, when you get the mixture of London and New York Open, 
and when London's halfway through the session, you also have an incredible spike of volatility. Now, if you are somebody that wants to trade sideways ranges, really wants to scout one, two pips, three pips, five pips out of the market, you may want to do a later time. Something after something you did for a while there, Tyra, was actually trade uh, the afternoon of the New York session. And in currency, that's considered a very weak period, isn't it, where it kind of starts to sideways a lot of the time. It's yeah. good if you apply a strategy around that. But I like personally to be reactionary to what I call fake outs or stop hunts. And when you start to see these, they become very apparent. And when they yeah. become apparent, you think, why wasn't I doing this earlier? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We've got a really good question from Zodiac89, actually. I'm going to get to that in a second. Now, I've been um, given authority to actually say this. If if we can get the likes, now we've got 230 people in the room. If we can get the likes over 200, Thomas is going to give everybody access uh, to his OnlyFans page. So um, <laughs> hit that like button. And um, really Thomas, <laughs> so Thomas is going to give you absolute access to his only fans page so we can actually keep these webinars going and actually make that really good. Now, Zodiac asks, um, do we have the same, do Thomas and I have the same opinion on, on scalping and scaling in uh, to a position or entering it all at once? Now, that is actually a really good question because sometimes scaling, Thomas, when Thomas talks about scaling, he's talking about it for all the right reasons. But what I've found in the past is people get a little bit confused and use scaling as uh, a, a choice to actually place a bad trade. And if it goes well for them, then they'll add to it. So rather than actually doing the analysis correctly, oh, what they're going to do is they're going to have um, they're going to ha have a, a, a throw a, a dart at a board and say, if it, I'm going to get to go in at a quarter because I'm not really confident in this trade, but I really feel like I need to place a trade. And then I'm going to scale in if it starts going in my direction. And if it doesn't, well, I won't. That's the wrong style of scaling. Okay? Scaling is a really, really good way to mitigate your risk, uh, but it's not a good way just to gamble. So you want to make that differentiation of if you're scaling to actually increase your position when the market starts to move in your favor, excellent. That's what Thomas is talking about. But for people who don't, who think they probably shouldn't be placing this trade, so they're only going to go in small and they'll start scaling in if it actually goes hoping and praying. So that's not the idea of scaling, okay? It's really, really important to still be wanting the market to do what you're expecting it to do from your analysis standpoint. Very, very important. When you use scaling in that uh, way, it's absolutely brilliant as a strategy, uh, but don't use it as a guess and check, okay? That's, that's really, really important. Yeah, it doesn't give you liberal ability to just buy anything you feel like at any time. Oh, I'm only putting a third risk on. It'll be easy to get it back in the next trade. <laughs> That's not the idea and not the concept. <laughs> so, no. yeah, absolutely. Uh, some people are saying here, should you trade at the same time every day? I think if you are scalping, it will be prudent to look at London Opens, especially Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday sessions. They tend to be very, very strong. Obviously, the Monday session will be one of the weaker days to trade because you haven't got that direction from the biggest market in the world yet, which is the New, the New York or American market. So that's something that's a little bit of a tip there. You don't have to trade the same time every day, but scalpers do need to learn the nuances of the market during yeah. that period. US Open is different to London Open. Yes. Any scalpers out there, put your hands up right now in the chat. Let us know. Have you noticed that there's a totally different nuance when you're talking about the types of traps you see, the types of trades you see around the UK Open and the US Open? It's a very good question. It I is. like the UK Open the most for Forex. That would be my number one. Tyrone, what would you be your number one? Yeah, look, um, I, I love, I, I personally love the, I, and I don't do it anymore because I'm just, you know, I'm too old and too tired to be trading that late. But uh, mm -hmm. when London actually closes and New York is trading, it's the only market open in the world. That's one of my favorite markets because it's one of the most stable. But uh, London Open, if you want to trade, um, if you want to scalp especially and get positions in place for swing trading, it is a fantastic market to trade. There's no question about that. But understanding and trading at the same time gives you the insight of what you can actually generally expect. So what that does, it gives you an advantage of one, you know what the market generally does at that time and its behavioral pattern. So, and by that, I mean, yeah, the Euro, say Euro USD might have a range of say 40 to 60 pips on average, just as, a, as a, an example, right? Uh, between seven and 9 p.m. If for some reason you open the chart at eight o'clock and it's moved 150 pips, that's an unusual move. 
And you, you can appreciate that and know that straight away simply because you trade that market a lot and you know that that's actually twice the move that it would normally do. So you're going to adjust your trading accordingly. So, And if you trade the US Open versus the London Open versus the Asian Open, you're going to see very different uh, ranges of movement on the different pairs. So I think as a starting point, especially when you are starting uh, on your trading journey, trying to stick to the same times to actually get a real gist of what the market does in that particular time and for particular pairs is a really important concept. Absolutely, it is. So you'll notice that the US dollar yen here is coming up to a little bit of a higher time frame zone or area. And these are the types of zones or areas that we were talking about before, where you may highlight areas of interest, set alerts, come back to them if that gets into that area, and then put the time into the chart. That is also a very valid way of scalping. The problem with scalping is just always be warned you have to put a lot of time in, especially if you want to take that scalping to a day trading concept. Day trading means sitting in front of the charts. It doesn't mean going and having a cup of coffee all the time and being outside. You can do that, but only when you set your alerts. You've got to have your zone set. And a lot of your time will actually be just setting alerts and getting ready for things. I guess we'll talk about gold here, Ty, just in regards to an alert that we have set that may or may not trigger. We don't know whether it's going to trigger. And that's around this idea of 1830. Now we've got a strong resistance here. Of course, this is our opinion. Um, you guys should do your own research before looking at it. But our opinion is that there is a strong resistance here at 1830. So it's a point of interest for us as a scalper, as a day trader, and even as somebody looking for a breakout that we then can get into participation. If 1830 is breached, our next expectation becomes 1870. Has it happened? No. Will it happen? We don't know that yet. But if we do get closures, there are many rejection weeks here that show us that if we get past 1830, 1831, and we get a closure on a higher time frame, that it really could be very beneficial for gold traders. And we may see what we call that participation zone which really gets us excited about that idea of scalping in the smaller timeframes and riding that participation zone to the next mm. resistance level. That's what yep. it's all about. That's what today's session is really trying to drive home. Top-down analysis, find participation areas using quality support resistance, and then allocate your trading yep. concepts to them accordingly. Yeah, gold is not much different to anything else that we trade. Just just for all of you who might be wondering, we don't really change the uh, the I guess technical analysis, whether it's gold, silver, oil, Euro USD, BHP, or Commonwealth Bank. Uh, technicals are technicals, so you apply them in the same manner, but. Obviously, every support and resistance and range of movement is different. So that's the only thing that really separates every single pair and every single trading instrument that you've got. So mm -hmm. uh, the technical setups are actually the same. We're looking for the lightning bolt. We're looking for breaks of support and resistance. And I think in a way, that's what makes technical analysis so easy to learn is that once you actually do understand what you're actually looking for, you can apply it to any instrument you want. So and it works for every instrument. We know that for a fact because we basically look at every single one of them on a daily basis. So yeah. um it makes it very, very easy to actually apply the same logic. It's just understanding the different ranges. I think that's where um, you have to really, I guess, delve deep into uh, the particular pairs that you're looking for, limited uh, number of pairs, stocks, or whatever it is that you're doing, and having a good understanding of its movements and understanding what its expectations are. Because if you know what its expectations are, you'll keep your expectations in line for every trade that you place. So we have some questions coming in here about enlightening us to gold scalping strategies and what we'd be doing. Of course, that moving the, the breakout would be also good there. We've got Niraj saying, do you just stick to limited pairs instruments or do you check volatility on monthly, quarterly basis and can change pairs accordingly? I think with scalping, you do want to probably limit your instruments to a degree. Scalping is knowing that instrument incredibly well. You need yeah. to kind of almost intimately understand the way it trades, the time of day it trades. It's very important that you've seen almost all scenarios before on it, before you master that particular instrument. And this goes for all of the Forex pairs and the commodity pairs. Different ones are really great for scalping, such as the majors, but as you start to broaden, they may not be as good for the scalping strategy. You may need a swing strategy or a day trading strategy for it. Be careful about expanding your range too fast, too quick. Tyron, I think I was certainly one that expanded it too quickly. I thought I could scalp 
anything from a penny stock to the Mexican peso to the Chinese yuan to it. <laughs> I was going with everything. And and unfortunately, that was something that burnt me. And I'm pretty sure you had very similar um, yes. opportunities. I think everybody does. I think everybody at the start. Yeah. Everybody at the start does that. I think it's it's a, it's only natural that that actually does mm -hmm. happen. But you, it's very important that you obviously learn from that. And look, of that's course. the benefit of these webinars, of course, that we're putting out all the information that we've learned in our many years of trading to actually give everybody the edge so you don't make the same mistakes that we did. We're not saying that we didn't make mistakes. We made plenty. Mm -hmm. uh, we could write a book, uh, probably a book each, on the mistakes that we made uh, early on. But it's that's very, right. very important to understand that as long as you learn from those mistakes, that's the important thing. And you can get there in the end. And the learning curve isn't as steep as people think. A lot of it has actually got a lot to do with the psychology. And what I'm going to say is actually, I want to put a big thank you out to everybody who's actually subbed uh, during this webinar. Pepperstone's YouTube channel hit a significant milestone uh, during this webinar, actually hit 25,000 subs. So for all of you who subbed um, uh, during the webinar, thank you very much for that. We do really appreciate it. And you know, all of these webinars, just for, I know there were a few questions earlier on, are always recorded and you'll find them on the Pepperstone YouTube channel pretty much straight after the webinar. So go go in there. You can see all of the backlog ones that we've done. We've done many. We've been doing them for many years now. Um, yeah. And there's all different topics. So yeah, definitely check that out. But a big thank you for all of you who subbed because that is a, a significant milestone. So I'll just go some rapid fire to some questions here, Ty. 20 EMA, 50 EMA, and 200 SMA are the moving averages that we had on the chart there. Just to answer that question. Uh, somebody out there knows that I did some wheat trading a while ago. Be careful on soft <laughs> commodities, guys. The roll on soft commodities can be brutal. Remember, it is a rolling contract, not necessarily spot. And we have some other questions here. Would you be prepared to short gold reversal signal around 1830? Yes, you would always be looking at it from both angles. You're a trader. So while you may think it breaks 1830, until it does, you're looking for reversal signals there as well from a scalping day trade perspective. So you could do that. I tend to think that if it gets back up to 1830 next time, it will break it. But we're looking for the closure daily above to show us that participation. Uh, Triple F Trader says, I'd like to find out why gold had that intense reversal yesterday and the move down to 1806, then 30 minutes later up to 1818. Uh, can I just put it down to New York volatility? A hundred percent. Yeah, you can. Um, the volatility was extreme coming into the market open. And that's probably around the period that you got that big movement. Obviously, a dump in the market. It hurts gold. Gold recovers because people sometimes hedge against it. So that's a pretty big deal. Now, if anyone would like to find out any more about, of course, our courses and things that we do, or they want to kind of take their trading to the next level in 2022 you can jump on over to fxevolution.com the links are here you can type that in you can look at the ultimate trading masterclass pretty much our culmination work over the last i would say decade plus that we've put <laughs> in and you can use coupon code ultimate day and that will give you a special 50 percent off which is in celebration of australia day which is next week for us over here in australia um alternatively if you're looking to take your training to the next level we do still have a couple of spots open for the February intake for our private mentoring groups. Um, that is an exciting period as well. So you can go and check that out and yeah, so much more. Yeah, that is one of those things that if you are looking at trading, um, you know, taking your trading to the next level, you definitely want to be checking out the mentoring. Mm -hmm. And you know, don't even take our word for it. Jump into our public Discord and ask the people who have done it. Um, there, there are plenty now who have done it over the last few months, and they will tell you exactly what they think of it. Um, and I'm pretty sure that you won't be leaving without wanting to do it yourself because the, the best people ask are the people who are actually doing it. So definitely uh, one to watch. Uh, we have another question about robots here. Uh, certainly you can, a lot of people, a lot of engineers have come to us over the years and co coded robots and coded expert advisors. Look, it's, it's a good way of, of getting into understanding things, but it is not as easy as you think. Remember, the big banks hire some very, very high IQ boffins to get their robots off and running, and they are incredibly complex in comparison to what you might be able to make. So I guess there's a difference between two EAs crossing each other and you you putting it in an engulfing candle and saying that's a buy to really creating a robust EA. And it can be time consuming. So you need to be aware of that and can be a little bit difficult there. And then we've got a question here to finish up, Ty. Uh, NAS 100 and US 30. Uh, look, we'll be talking about that in the next session that we do. Uh, but on top of that, they are starting to, of course, look a little bit shaky there. Look for trend lines, I would say, on the bigger time frames. And you can always check out our daily content as well on that type of stuff. Anything yeah, else, Ty, that you see there? 
I think that, um, look, we've had a few people ask about uh, technical setups. Uh, we do those in our webinar, which starts in about 10 minutes. So yeah, feel free if you want to look at, we're going to analyze the markets of all the concepts that we basically talked about tonight. But of course, mm -hmm. we're going to look at all the live markets. So if you want to jump in on that webinar, that starts in 10 minutes. All you have to do is just go to the FX Evolution YouTube page um, and that'll be there for you. So uh, All right, guys. Well, from all of us from Pepperstone and of course, FX Evolution, we'd like to welcome you to 2022. I know it's 19 days past, but mm -hmm. we believe this is going to be one of the best years of FX trading in the last couple of years out there. Volatility, central banks, get ready for interest rate moves all over the board. We've already seen, of course, the UK do a rate hike. Ty, I can't remember a time where we're seeing multiple central banks doing rate hikes and it, it, it reminds me, I mean, I, I just can't even believe it because after, of course, the GFC, they sat for so long. So yeah. it's going to be an exciting one. I think it's going to be a really, really exciting year. And I think we're going to have, you know, many, many opportunities across many, many different asset classes to make a lot of money this year. So cannot wait yeah. to actually talk to you every fortnight about or every yeah, basically two weeks about them. So stay tuned for your next invitation for the same webinar. We do one every Wednesday, but Pepperstone's every fortnight to look out for your invites for those. Please join us. Um, we love to have your support. And of course, if you want to have any input into what we actually put out, just let your Pepperstone representative know and they'll pass on the feedback to us and we'll try and tailor the webinars to exactly what people are asking for. So thank you so much for joining us tonight on our first webinar of 2022. And we look forward to seeing you either in 10 minutes or in a couple of weeks. Thanks very much, everybody. Bye for now.